So this is a follow-up video for a program called TalkTree that I made a video on a while ago. And it's basically a program that's meant to facilitate the creation of dialogue trees for your video games and game maker. Anyway, the first official release of this came out a couple months ago. And I will have to apologize to Winter Drake, the guy who made it, because I kind of put off making this video forever because I was just, as you all know, super lazy over the summer. Anyway, I've gone and made a couple different dialogue trees. It's very basic. Pretty much just informing the user that there is indeed text on the screen and uh, which response you chose. I don't believe I talked about this, but you can store multiple dialogue trees in the same file. Um, so this is the same file, the same test file that I made just now. And it has this, uh, it has this which you see on the screen right now. And also has, if I can load the program again, a separate one, which is uh, much more linear and also contains pretty stupid looking text. Now about TalkTree itself, it has fixed a couple issues that I noticed with it. Uh, for example, when you were to save a file, it would look something like this, file, not fire. And you can save the section as red or blue or whatever. And before the file wouldn't actually go to where you saved it to, it would go to uh, the app data file. The Game Maker Studio uses for like its read write location by default, uh, somewhere in here. And uh, nobody really wants to go in here uh, to retrieve the files that they saved. They want to go to the location that they saved it to originally. And that has been fixed. That has to do with uh, Game Maker's weird file system limits. I believe that's the main thing. So now I'm going to close out of that or I'm going to minimize it or whatever. And I'm going to go into the example file because I should have covered this in the original video that I made, but I didn't for whatever reason. I'm going to actually delete this initial test file and and now I'm going to go into included files, add included file, and I'm basically going to add, if I can find it, the test file that I made. And that's going to be test.ini. And it's going to load. And using this is actually very simple. It doesn't have the simplest, um, it doesn't have the simplest looking interface. It's not the most friendly of code, which could be a different problem that I'll address later. But anyway, all you have to do to use the, t the um, the talk tree uh, file that you created is go file instead of dialog example 2.ini say test.ini or whatever the name of the file that you added is and the section can be red or blue or whatever uh, whatever you saved it as. I have a red and a blue um, simply because uh, two NPCs in this example are red and blue and that's where their dialog sections are in any file so this is going to run and I'm going to get my mouse cursor out of there and I'm going to go and talk to the blue guy Instead of whatever text I had before, this blue guy is now showing me the dialogue tree that I created uh, earlier. So I chose response B. If I talk to him again, I can choose response A. If I go up to this red guy, I talk to the red guy. Okay, this is page two. I'm aware of that. All right, and as you can see, that is the, uh, the same dialogue tree I have set up over here. Talking to the red guy, okay, this is page two. If you go up to, uh, to these things, haven't programmed behavior for the sword and the speed um, like statue guy things so they will still behave as they did originally and that's basically all you have to do again modifying this on your own isn't the easiest thing in the world I tried messing around with it a little bit before, uh, before I started recording this and while it is commented out decently well it's uh, it's still not the most fun thing to mess around with in the world of computers at some point in the future if anybody is watching this that watched the RPG maker clone video that I made where I basically tried to make something that looks as much like an RPG Maker game and Game Maker Studio as possible. Um, at some point in the future, I will try porting this over so that you can use this talk tree program for that miniature game engine. If and when I finally manage to do that, I'll make a third video on this. But anyway, this is talk tree. I'll leave a link to where you can find this in the description of this video. Wow, that sentence was hard to say. Um, I will point out that this is a paid program. It's not terribly expensive, but it's just something to be aware of. And even if you don't decide to buy it, if you plan on making a dialogue system on your own, um, I do think this kind of flowchart is good for uh, visualizing what you want to have done, even if you're just drawing it on like a pencil and paper or on a whiteboard or something like that. So even if you don't plan on buying it, I do think you should go and uh, have a look at the screenshots and see how it works. I'm not sure actually if there's a demo of it available, and that might be a useful thing to have. But anyway, my name is Dragonite, and I will see you all later. By the way, was this original program made in GameMaker 8.0 or GameMaker 7 or something?
Because I just noticed it uses things like n plus equals 1 instead of n plus plus. And the code isn't properly indented, which will happen sometimes when you try to import an older version of GameMaker into GameMaker Studio. Interesting.